Hi everybody, Jacob here. Welcome back to the Fragrant Bunker. It's been a while. Uh, I've been to the hospital and uh, I was I went to the emergency room and then I had to get operated. Everything was very last minute. It was all very intense. Anyway, long story short, I am back and with a story and I want to talk to you about the perfumes that uh, I took with me to the hospital or slash the perfumes that I was craving right after my surgery right after I was let go back home. So it's it's kind of, I don't want to say this is a top five hospital perfumes video because it's not. It's mostly, I don't know, like a form of diary or my personal note to myself so that I can kind of memorize forever this time of my life and uh, look back several years from now and maybe check like what were the perfumes I was using to get through the situation in the hospital and through surgery and through the ER and then what was I into after I came home? Like what's the smell I was craving? These are really important things to me uh, and I think they mean something but you know before I forget which perfumes played a magical or a big role in this um, going on to two weeks now situation that I've been going through before I forget, you know, I kind of would like to make a video about it and record them, you know, etch them into video stone, like hieroglyphics, uh, in a way, ancient Egypt, but a new, Okay, so first subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. Um, push the join button next to the subscription button. Become a member today. Gain access to extra perks. You can also join me on Patreon. Super Dacob all spelled together there as well for extra perks. Thank you to my members and patrons who have already pledged. Everything I say in this video is for entertainment purposes only. Not rooted in truths or facts. Everything's alleged and just my opinion. And I also want to say that I am not uh, a doctor, you know, so I'm not giving any medical advice here, this uh, whatsoever, nor do I think that perfumes are necessarily good for you when you're in the hospital. And in fact, I want to begin with the beginning. So I was kind of lucky in the unlucky situation that I was in, unlucky because I was sick and I needed to go to the hospital, but Lucky that um, I felt something was wrong with me like a couple of days leading up to the ER. I just felt like mm, in my body something was off. And uh, so almost three days passed, right? And on the third day, I was like, okay, this pain isn't going away. Something is wrong. So in the evening, I was rushed to the ER. Now, lucky, I say, in the unlucky situation because... I was feeling bad, but I wasn't completely like collapsing yet. So I did have the strength. Once I decided, okay, I have to go to the ER, I did have the strength to take a shower, wash myself, because I thought if, I, I thought to myself, you know, at the ER, it's not going to be anything. Maybe this is just some simple thing. Maybe they can fix it. I don't know how. I don't know what I was thinking. You know, you always hope for the best. But you also expect the worst. At least that's how I am. So I thought to myself, before I go to the ER, if I have the strength, let me take a shower. Let me trim my nails. Like, let me wash my hair. Heaven forbid they were to, you know, tell me to stay or operate. I don't know what. At least I am clean. So I... I took a, a shower, washed my hair, dried my hair, pampered myself. And then I thought, okay, going to the ER, which perfume should I wear? I don't want to annoy anybody. You know, there's people there bleeding out and there's a lot happening in the ER, right? And I don't want to annoy anybody. I just want to smell clean to whoever will inspect me. I just want to smell dignified uh, and 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 clean so that you know none of the um, nurses or doctors feel like icky I, I know they're used to a lot but I just want to do my contribution as well as a potential patient I also want to arrive there making their job as easy as possible as well so I thought to myself which perfume you know, can help me get through this fear and anxiety but also at the same time, which perfume can be respectful towards them and towards other patients. So I was looking for something that was not overbearing, overwhelming, um, extremely, you know, no ouds, no sandalwoods, no deep spices. You know, I, I wasn't going for any of that. So I, 
I wanted something that in the Cologne territory, but not a Cologne, right? And I wanted something with the bergamot. I want something that gives you fresh vibes, but at the same time clean, but also deep and sophisticated. A hint of spices, but just a smidge in the far, far, far distance. Nothing overbearing and overpowering. So I bathed myself in this. One of the loves of my life, uh, Pour Monsieur, which is a fingerprint magnet. There it is. Uh, Pour Monsieur in the Eau de Toilette form, not the Eau de Parfum. The Eau de Toilette is a Chypre. The Eau de Parfum, the Eau de Toilette is a Chypre. The Eau de Parfum is a Fougère, and they are slightly different. And yeah, that's my hospital perfume. So, uh, but <laughs> here's the twist. So I thought to myself, so I sprayed on quite a bit chest, legs, you know, hands, like this thing is a, that Sicilian bergamot, very, very subtle, very, very subtle, a little bit of ginger in there, you know, it kind of smells very clean. Oak moss, it dries it all down, rains it back in, highly sophisticated perfume, but very, very, very respectful of, of its surroundings. So this was perfection for me. So I went to the ER, Thankfully, the ER was not too crowded, so I was relatively quickly seen by a doctor. Uh, my blood was taken. Um, a lot of things were done. Two hours later, they admitted me into the hospital. They're like, you know what? Mm, we need to keep you at least overnight, and then we're going to do more tests in the morning and then see if we got to operate or not. So anyway, um, by the next morning... Now, I left this one at home. I did not take it with me. The perfume that I did take with me, however, and I... I don't know what I was thinking, but kind of makes sense now. I did take a perfume with me, but not because I thought I'm going to spray perfume in the hospital room or surrounded by other patients. No, I, I would never do that. Um, I took it with me and I thought, <coughs> pardon me, I'm still healing here. Thumb up the video if you're enjoying it. I know it's a rough subject, but needs to be done, I feel. So I took a perfume with me just to have next to my hospital bed in case they were to admit me to the hospital, you know. So I, I was, I did this kind of preventative thought process. I didn't know if they were going to admit me and if they were going to, and then at least I have one perfume with me. And that perfume, I did not want it to be Chanel and I did not want it to be something strong to which I've already bonded with particular memories because I thought to myself, if this is going to go really bad in the hospital, I, I don't want to have one of those perfumes that give me good memories. And I don't want to taint that with this new bad memory that I'm about to maybe get. So I was thinking of taking a perfume with me that has a small bottle and that has a mythological territory. Like I have not bonded with it in any special way. Yeah, I love it. But it's very, very neutral. And I, I thought to myself, this perfume has the capability of surviving this situation without it becoming tainted, like without me associating such a negative memory to it. So I've had this perfume long enough, uh, over a decade, I think, almost a, almost a decade, not over a decade, almost a decade. And uh, I keep repurchasing it in these small vials. Uh, and I thought to myself, you know, this is this is this is going to give me kind of strength and kind of clear vision and vibes while I'm in the hospital, not to spray it on, just to sniff it from the bottle. And so this is the one I took with me uh, from the Hermesons range. I thought uh, Queer d'Ange, and I always repurchase the tiny bottles for travel, and uh, I always have them with me. So Queer d'Ange or Angel Leather. I thought Angel is a kind of <laughs> It's kind of good to have a little protective angel with you while you're in the hospital, I thought. But then also I thought, this has just the right smell. It, it's a soft suede accord, uh, floral in a way, powdery, elevates the mood. It has that classic signature Hermes Osmanthus hiding in the background, which is, a you know, typical. It's kind of a signature of Hermes. And uh, it's just very, very, very reassuring as a, as a fragrance. So um, I took it with me. I knew I had it with me. And it made me feel safe to know that it was with me. 
uh, in my bag. Now, I didn't, like I said, Chanel spray perfumes or like Chanel number no. five, I thought to myself, extra. I was like, no, 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 no. I do not want that to be anywhere near the hospital. I don't want to have, I don't want to attach any memory, any neg any potential negative memory to Chanel number no. five. The doctors, uh, the staff, the nurses, they were all really, really lovely. Um, and uh, the other patients that I encountered, uh, were also really very nice. Some were very scared, others less scared. But I had to freshen up every day. So I I did not have a perfume with me, but I had the next best thing, and uh, that would be my deodorant. So my deodorant was my perfume. It was the only thing that I would allow myself to apply to my body that had some form of smell, but very, very light. And I've been using this deodorant for many years now. I always keep repurchasing it. I love it to bits. It does not stain the armpits, it does not stain my clothes ever, and it keeps me fresh throughout the day. And yes, we're back to Pour Monsieur, and it is a stick deodorant. I do not recommend the spray, although maybe they might have discontinued the spray version by now, but the stick version of the Pour Monsieur de uh, deodorant is, I love it. I love it to bits. So it's very, very bergamotty, very lemony, very citrusy. It has a bit of alcohol, so it does disinfect. I always put cream first on my armpits before I apply the, the deodorant. And uh, this was the only thing I actually wore throughout my hospital stay. You know, every time I would wake up in the morning, they would wake you up actually always, you know, blood checkup and all the other stuff they had to do. Later on, after surgery, bandages and all that. And yes, I did have to have surgery in the end. Um, so this was kind of my little survival kit. Okay, this and baby wipes. <laughs> baby wipes, which have absolutely no perfume, but they also helped a little bit wash, uh, you know, freshen up the sweat areas, the gland areas. You know, you can't full-blown shower anymore after surgery, but you can wash up bits and bobs. So Huggies... Uh, Baby wipes is what I also used. And Paul Monsieur deodorant. Now, so these are kind of the, the, the three. And these are different enough, mind you. The, the perfume and the deodorant. They, there is a difference between them. It's not the same thing, you know. Quite different. But they're both lovely. I love them to bits. Now, after I came home, after surgery, and after uh, a brief time post-surgery in the hospital, I came back home. And then I did not feel the need for perfumes. And you know how much I love my Chanel perfumes. I did not feel the need to go towards Chanel at all. Weird. But I did, um, after a couple of days, kind of feel the need for one perfume in particular. And I still do not know why. But it really helped me elevate my mood. Maybe, maybe because of the cyclamins in there. But anyway, after my surgery, after the hospital, first time back home, during recovery, the first perfume I craved, of all the perfumes I have, this was the one I craved. I craved Cheap and Chic uh, by Moschino, a little olive oil bottle. The bottle made me happy. It always makes me happy to, to look at the bottle. This 90s fragrance that is still uh, produced by Euro Italia after all of these decades have passed. Uh, so this is the Eau de Toilette concentration, still in production today. And it is a musky white floral cyclamen accord. Now, the cyclamen is not really present in many perfumes. Something about this little beauty, I don't know, reminiscent of the 90s. Oh, there's a beauty to it. There's an elegance to it. There's there's a subtle, delicate touch to it. it to me, it was just perfect after the surgery, coming back home. I don't know. Again, that clean vibe. Aldehydes are in there as well, but the musks stay floral. They don't go really... Heavy. It never turns into an amber accord. It never turns into what used to be called, and it can no longer be called an oriental fragrance. This one doesn't go in that direction. This one stays very occidental, actually. And uh, I don't know, just happy. 
Happy vibes, happy vibes, but but delicate. It doesn't push you too much to stay like, get out of the bed, walk, do this, do that. No, it's like very, take your time, chill. It lulls you in a nice way. It gives you slight, tiny little pushes. You know, that kind of musk that can get a little bit peppery sometimes. But it's the cyclamen in here that really soothes me and reminds me of my grandma because uh, we used to go uh, hunting for wild cyclamens in the in the forest always together, uh, beginning of, of autumn. So good memories. And strangely, like a couple of days after my craving of cheap and chic by Moschino was a little bit subsiding, I needed the opposite. I needed the complete opposite. I needed something powerful, strong. I needed something mythological. I needed something that felt like it was connecting me to the ancient past of humanity. Like I wanted something with heft. And then I also went into, you know, digging and watching documentaries on ancient Egypt. I love those two bits. Uh, their culture, their religion, their belief systems, uh, their politics, their art. And while I was watching, one perfume came to mind and kept kind of calling my name. I was a little bit scared to apply it during recovery because I thought, well, this thing is really powerful. Are we sure we want to go there? But I think I wanted a spiritual experience. I needed spiritual depth after surgery. Very, very interesting how my psyche kind of went there. And there was only one perfume that I, I felt like I could use and that I still, as I'm filming today, feel that I can use. Like right now I'm completely focused on this one, but it's all about the dosage. You have to know how to, how to dose this one. So it's Ensemble Mythique, the mythical incense by Guerlain. Uh, this version still has real ambergris in it, as per the ingredients listed on the back of the box. Um, if you buy this brand new today, the ambergris has been taken off the list, so you're going to have some sort of substitute for it. But the thankfully, the formulation that I bought still had real ambergris in it. So, And the ambergris in here, once uh, the perfume really warms up on you, it starts emanating a depth that is, it's just mythological, seriously. There's frankincense in here as well. And a damask rose, a very, very dusty rose and aldehydes. So it opens up with this sparkly rose, but <laughs> like many Guerlain perfumes, it kind of tricks you. It's not really going to be all a pleasant, easy, rosy, breezy journey. Pretty soon the ambers and the ambergris take over. Uh, even though the aldehydes keep everything afloat and sparkly, but the depth of that ambergris as it warms up on the skin is just otherworldly, really. The frankincense is timid, very timid and shy, but it gives you that spiritual experience because it is frankincense. And then, you know, watching all the documentaries about ancient Egypt as I'm in bed recovering and having wafts of this coming at me, it just, I was in heaven. It really made me feel so good. Um, the dosage is very important. It's almost like a ritual how to apply this one. You do not overspray on some mitique. If you want to enjoy it, half a spray, one spray tops, chest area or hand. If you're very, very, very susceptible to this intensity, then just behind the knee. And that's the best way it really blooms on the skin by not overspraying it because then you get to catch all the subtle nuances that this perfume actually does have. If you overspray it, it suffocates you. you. You don't enjoy it anymore. You don't get to really feel all of the beautiful nuances that this perfume has to deliver. You can only really feel them if you underdose it. And it's a little bit like um, uh, homeopathy or however you want to call it. <laughs> Look it up. It's kind of, you take a minimal dosage and it triggers your whole, it kind of resets the body, right? The, the spirit in a poetical way. And it kind of sets the tone to allow your spirituality to be more receptive towards your ancestors and your past. And so to watch ancient Egyptian documentaries while wearing this kind of helps you even more 
latch on to the past. It's such a beautiful experience. So I needed that kind of spiritual experience while I was or still am recovering on Samitik. And that's where we are uh, at right now. I kind of prompted Bubbles to generate a hospital room here for the occasion. And uh, this is not the hospital room that I was in. This is a AI generated hospital room. I just wanted Bubbles to create something a little bit color. My room was all gray and sad. Uh, but uh, I thought for this video, I don't want it to all be gray and sad. I want it to be hopeful and for maybe the people who are dealing with hospital situations, um, it's not easy. So I thought it's kind of cute to have a colorful, fun hospital room, at least for the video. So we have a little bit of kind of positive vibes, you know, going on, hopeful vibes, and not just the dreary, sad, gray hospital room, which are, you know, classic hospital rooms. So that's why I prompted this kind of uh, futuristic, but also retro, colorful hospital room. There you have it, guys. So that's that's where we're at. So this is not really a list of my top five anything. These are currently the ones that got me through or that helped me, the perfumes that helped me get through my um, health scare and uh, ER and hospital and operation and recovery. A lot, all of it condensed together. And these are the perfumes that came out on the other side of the tunnel. Who knew? Now I know. And I'm glad that I made this video so that I could kind of archive it for myself. And if you have any tips on perfumes that you wore or would recommend wearing before as you're getting ready to go to the hospital or at the hospital or if you have heaven forbid been there yourself how did you relate to perfumes after you've left the hospital you know was it easy was it just kind of like oh yeah let's go back to perfumes or was it a progressive slow it also depends from what reason you were at the hospital of course duh Thank you so much for watching. Thumb up this video and uh, let me know your thoughts down below. Until next time, never forget to never give up on love. Subscribe. Bye.